Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining and marketing giant Glencore recently handed over the Macau Se Secondary School to South Africa's Department of Education as part of its social and labor plan commitment to the Department of Mineral Resources. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer tells us more. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Shannon. Glencore recently provided 2.76 million rand um, in funding for the Launchpad Video Mentoring Facility in Pola. Can you tell us about this? You know, it's fantastic how you've got the schools as the hardware and then you've got these launch pads as the software, as it were, because <coughs> these schools are fantastic, but the software that you can add through these mentoring programs is sensational mm -hmm. because uh, here you can link, you know, the teenagers of a rural area to one of the most advanced urban areas. You know, you can link them up to the North American trends that are setting the 21st century alive and, and have these young kids mentored on a, on, a, on a weekly basis. And, you know, the discussions can be around education and career paths and health and all the other things that uh, are important to development in the world. And these are young, impressionable people who are linking up you know, with some of the best minds and best educators in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's all via video setup that is now so available in the 21st century. And it was really good of uh, Glencore to, to make this offering to the teenagers of, of their coal field areas, knowing that, of course, you know, some of these kids are going to be their uh, employees of the future. They might be their engineers. You know, this is how it could develop. So it's a nice win-win type of situation. But also that long-term uh, attitude of these mining companies really impresses me because you feel as though, you know, they, they're in South Africa for the long haul. Mm -hmm teaches children the technology and technological advances of the century. You know, and, and there's so much to, to, to do now, <laughs> you know, with these, this sort of technology available where you can actually sit face to face. You might be in Polo, a small community in the coal fields of Mpumalanga, mm -hmm. and here you are interfacing with a mentor in Canada or the United States, and they're giving you all sorts of advice and all sorts of trend setting that can be to your advantage. Now, um, the company also launched a 75 million rand state-of-the-art school, um, demonstrating its commitment to the future of education in South Africa. Can you tell us the thinking behind that? And you know, this 75 million, it's a lot of money. And when you look at that school, it's beautifully built. And you know, it's not only a high school, it starts with preschool, primary school, you know, it goes through all the phases of schooling. And you know, it's got facilities there that are mouth-watering. It's mm -hmm. got scientific labs, it's got workshops, it's got libraries, it's got a lot of things on offer for, for these young kids coming through. And when you looked at the pictures, you know, the kids were beautifully dressed, everything looked so new. And one sort of had to feel quite gleeful about the fact that uh, kids are being given an opportunity. And I've been past that Pala township, you know, when I came out of Twerfontein after looking at uh, that eight billion rand investment that Glencore had put into Twerfontein optimization program which actually lowered you know the mining costs of uh, mining coal and, and uh, refreshed the whole area and also led to you know housing development in Polo that's is another facet of it there's a 70 million rand housing development for 120 families that are involved at Tuerfontein that, that were relocated there now they've also got the school nearby 75 million rands worth of hardware as I call it I think that uh, you know this must have impressed the education authorities. They must have also said, "Wow, you know, mining can leverage a lot of advantage for us as educators." Here, you know, Angie Macheka, the minister of uh, basic education, goes in there, and apparently, you know, she answered in Zulu, uh, which we couldn't quite translate that that she was getting the school for nothing. <laughs> it was a donation. Mm -hmm. She hadn't put the education department hadn't needed to put anything in. Because what had happened was that when you apply for your mining license and renewal of your, renewal of your mining license, there's such a thing as a social and labor plan attached to South Africa's mining. And as part of that social and labor plan, Glencore had committed itself to <laughs> the school, you know, which was like 75 million rands worth, nothing to sneeze at. Mm. And you could see the commitment of, of Glencore. You could see the executives who were there. You could see the pride. 
you could even see, you know, the CEO who's got so much on his plate. I mean, this is not only coal in Glencore, <laughs> it's, a, it's a diversified mm. major, and not only in mining, but marketing. So you can imagine how busy, you know, Ivan Glazenberg must be, but he takes the trouble to come out there and actually be there on that very cold day. You know, that says a lot mm. that he's looking after all stakeholders, you know, because you often see these CEOs, they're primarily interested in the, in the direct shareholders. He's also very interested in them, but he's, he's, he extends his interest to all the stakeholders. And there we could see it. Now he was prepared to go out there and actually see what had happened and celebrate, you know, with the people, with all his executives. So I thought it was really a, a good show put up by, by Glencore. Mm. The teachers, are they private teachers or are they employed by the department? Well, once it's handed over, it becomes the property of the basic education department. So then it must become a school that they run. Mm. So we could see the principal, they can see that he's been appointed, we saw him in the pictures, and I'm sure that the, the teachers are there, but that will become the responsibility of the Department of Education. And that's a an very important principle. Mm. You can't have mining companies having to diversify <laughs> into education mm. because you know their plate is full enough. And I noticed when I went to the Democratic Republic of Congo, that was a point made early by the Australians when they started investi uh, investing there, mm -hmm. saying, you know, the moment we put up a mine, it actually attracts people. So you might put up the mine, and while the exploration is going, you can't see anybody. As soon as the mine develops, suddenly there's housing all over the place, mm -hmm. and people are coming. And they come to your health facility. So if you set up a clinic, they come to your clinic. If you set up a school, they come to your school. And as the Australians were saying there, there needs to be a point where you say, Dum, this is no longer a mining property. Mm. This is no longer a mining enterprise. We're not diversifying into educational health. Mm. It must be taken over by the government. It must be taken over by either the provincial government or local government that the government does that job. And we saw that principle employed there, where there is a handover now to basic education department. They've got this fantastic facility on the go, but they have got to see that it works now, mm. which is also not an easy thing to do. Mm. You know, perhaps there will be some influences from the mine and they will help them where they can, mm. but it's no longer the direct responsibility of the mining company, which is very, very important. Mm. We can see it as a public-private partnership. Yeah, and maybe the, the um, that could be an aspect to it, that they see this as a bit of a partnership because they have built it, but the direct responsibility has transferred to government now. Mm. Now, moving on to coal supply, Glencore seems optimistic about coal supply in the future. Yes, I think that uh, the interview uh, that uh, Mining Weekly managed to get with, with Ivan Glazenberg while he was there and uh, speak to him about the wonderful investment you know in the school but also about the picture of mining coal because mm. we see that there's a lot of pressure building up in the world against fossil fuel mining mm. we even see the pope coming out with his encyclical you know and you know saying that this has got to be done properly so an important point emphasized by Ivan Glazenberg during the interview with mining weekly was that clean coal is possible it's not as if you can't clean the coal mm. and what coal miners do is they supply coal they, so the coal miners are not emitting <laughs> they're digging the coal and they're passing it on to well companies that produce electricity sometimes they're owned by the government sometimes they're owned by private sector sometimes they're owned by both but when you burn that coal for electricity you emit into the atmosphere you know nasties mm. and he's saying look everything is there to make sure that you can have clean coal the call is now, particularly with you know this whole world looking at this issue again, for richer countries to help the poorer countries mm. to clean the coal. Because you have a situation where that energy from the coal is still the cheapest. So you can't expect these developing countries like even South Africa, you know, to just change overnight. We get 90% of our electricity from burning coal. We get 30% of our car fuel, you know, from burning coal. So mm -hmm. we are so wedded to coal. It's just not funny that, you know, we, we would take half a century to come off it, even if we decided now to come off it. It's not an, an easy exit. Mm. So, you know, the, the more developing countries need to be assisted by these developed countries who in the past have emitted all that into the atmosphere without any people coming and standing up and saying, you know, change to a more expensive type energy. So they deserve to be assisted. And given that the technology to clean the coal is there, it's almost incumbent upon these developed 
economies that are calling for this cleaner energy to reach out to the developing ones who are still wedded to this coal to be able to clean up, you know, while they're doing it. And uh, this was an important point, you know, made by Ivan Glazenberg out in the coal fields of Mpumalanga. And they weren't only coal fields on that day, but they were cold fields mm -hmm. <laughs> on that day. It was freezing. Mm -hmm. And um, he was there, which I thought was, you know, reflected to his credit. Mm -hmm. Well, it's such a good news story, and I'm very glad that we could speak to you about that. It's a great pleasure, Shannon. Thank you. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.